Night Tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech Bite Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing a request that came from two people, and one of them is a donor to the channel, so I am prioritizing this video. And the request comes from Snake East 3682 and from already and it says could you do a guide on how to install actual budget it is quite simple but i've had problems with the https certificate for ages and there are no decent guides for it and then moretti said i need this too so let's go ahead and work with this so what is actual budget let's go into the github repository and uh, figure it out more about it uh, you can find that at github.com slash actual budget slash actual and it says it's a local first personal finance app. And they have a website called actualbudget.org where you can go and see details. This application has been released 40 times. It's on version 25.5 currently. That's good to hear. It means that there's uh, an active community of people working on it. And uh, it has uh, 313 contributors, so that's pretty good. The last update that I see here was last week. So they're definitely working on this application and it's mainly written in TypeScript and JavaScript. And as we can see here, it's basically a sort of uh, application to manage your finances. So pretty straightforward, pretty good. And uh, if we go down here, it says actual budget is a local first personal finance tools. It is 100% free and open source, written in Node.js. It has a synchronization element so that all your changes can move between devices without any heavy lifting. So you can use your phone to connect to this and it says if you're interested in contributing there's an option here to contribute and there's information about how to install it here and all of that's pretty good not a lot uh, much to see here so let's go into the actual budget website and see what do we have it says it's for your finances here's an, a link that you can go to a demo and if we click on that link it'll take us to this website here which is demo.actualbudget.org slash budget and we can see the application running basically it's like a, a way to track all your finances and it gives you a nice um, breakdowns of everything so you can have a history here you can go back um, in months and see how much you made how much you spent how much of it was overspending how much of it was budgeted and stuff like that and how much money you have left or savings basically so it's pretty good and here we can see like a breakdown of the different categories of uh, the finances so it's pretty good here we can see reports also so it calculates kind of a net worth here based on what you earned and how much you have spent and here it gives you a little cash flow um, graph and you can see how your spending is happening by month so that's pretty good here you can set up schedules. This is for bills, most likely, looks like. And yeah, basically you can define a payee, an account, and the amount. So it's basically scheduling the payments that you know you're gonna have. And then if you click on more here, you see you can create your payees that you referenced in the schedule. So you go click, click here, you can create a payee for uh, creating rules later. And then you can create the rules here, which is, you know, every month on x day you need to pay this amount and then you, know, you can do that here and here's the settings for the application not really much here when it comes to the setting it's more just how you want stuff to be displayed and here you get like a breakdown of all your accounts you have on the application so it's pretty good if you click here you can see like the details per account so that's pretty nice you can add an account down here so that's an option that you have and an interesting thing that I saw here is that they do have an option for doing automatic syncing to your bank and it works for banks in the UK the US and Canada so far based on what I saw so that's pretty good this is what the application looks like so it's pretty straightforward let's go to the website really quickly and see what I was mentioning about the syncing so if we scroll all the way down here we see bank sync and it says that it works for EU, UK, US, and Canada. And if you click on le learn more, it tells you what you have to do to that. Basically, for example, in my case, which I'm in North America, we have to rely on the simple fin bridge. And that means you have to get some secrets and keys to connect to the bank and so that it can synchronize stuff. So 
yeah, that's something that you have to read up on later, but it is a possibility. If you want to see more information about it, go to the actual website, which is actualbudget.org. They have a bunch of other stuff here. And now we're going to be going forward into the Docker Hub image. We're going to be using the official image that is located in actual budget slash actual dash server. And basically there's not mu much information here, but we have in their repository a Docker Compose file example. So it's here. So in actual budget slash actual, there's a Docker Compose YAML file that you can find in the actual packages sync server Docker Compose. And this is what we're going to be using for our container. So we can see that it listens on port 5006. We see the official image here referenced. Then here actual upload file sync size limit. It says is 20 megabytes. I don't see that this is necessary. It doesn't look like it. So let's try to see if it works without setting this up. And if it doesn't, then we're going to come back and make all these changes. Because this is just basically setting some limits in the sizes of stuff that we can pass to that. And it says if you're not using them, just remove environment. But I need the environment variable, so I'm not going to do that. So let me just remove this. And we have at least the basic things that we need here. And then for the volumes, now we have to put the folder in the NAS that we just created for the uh, container. So this is the path that we need. Let me copy that. Put it here and replace the content of that. And now the slash data inside the container is going to be mapped to this folder that we created in the NAS. So that's pretty good here. Let me get rid of this and then make sure that this is clear. This is in the NAS and this is in the container. And then this is a health check that is run to make sure that the application is going. We can leave it there. That's all right. And restart on list stopped. So that's pretty good. We don't have a problem with that. This would be a pretty good uh, configuration for the application. So let's see if it builds and we don't have any problems. So let's save and build. Okay, and it's going to pull the image. It's going to create the container. I'm going to be back when that is done. All right, as you can see, it was able to build the container. Exit code zero and we got the notification here. So we're good here. Let's go into the containers and follow the logs to see if there's anything strange going on it's pretty straightforward it just says it's listening on port 5006 so we're good we should be able to then go into the ip of our nas and then port 5006 and see if we can access the application so let's go into that ip and port and here we go we get this and it says that actual requires access to the shared array buffer in order to function properly if you're seeing this error either your browser does not support shared array buffer or your server is not sending the appropriate headers or you're not using HTTPS which is what should be the case right now because we're not using HTTPS and then see our troubleshooting documentation to learn more all right we need to fix that so but the application is running that's the important thing all right I want to highlight something in here because the website from the developer basically tells us that if you want to serve over HTTPS then we have to provide the certificate and the key to the application so that then it can manage the HTTPS connection. So that's kind of letting me know that if I don't want to use HTTPS, then I don't have to provide this. But as we just saw, we get a weird error message saying that it, it just doesn't want to work. It wants to connect with HTTPS and it wants you to uh, allow it to uh, manage the HTTPS connection, but that's a problem because if we go into the website, then if, if that were the case, what I would do is I would make the Synology NAS the reverse proxy that terminates the HTTPS connection and then passes that connection into the actual budget application unencrypted because that's internal to my house, right? So that's not necessary, but I cannot do that because the application is stubborn and wants an HTTPS connection for it to work. So as it is, it looks very difficult to try to expose this to the public internet the way this is working. I would suggest that the developer actually fixes this problem because this is a problem. He says that I should be able to put this behind a reverse proxy. There's a section here that talks about a reverse proxy, but 
it doesn't work the way that it's supposed to be because then you have to have an SSL connection coming to the proxy and then another SSL connection from the proxy to the application and as far as I've tried already several times I cannot get it to work on a Synology NAS as the reverse proxy so I would suggest that you allow people to actually use the application without having to provide a certificate and a key to enable the HTTPS but so far at least we can get the application to work internally locally to our net to our network so I'll explain how I did that so if I go back to my NAS if you see here I have enabled a certificate and a key and what I did is I got that uh, by requesting a free certificate from let's encrypt uh, I requested it through my Kubernetes cluster and then I imported that in here into the application on the security option certificate so I got that in here and then once I had that in here uh, then I was able to export the certificate which would give me a zip file that inside had PEM files for the certificate and for the key and what I did is I just renamed the extension from PEM to CRT for the certificate and to key for the key and then I went in here and I imported that so I uploaded them into the data directory for the application and then I uncommented the line that points to the key and certificate in the data directory then I restarted the container and now if I go into the IP of the NAS I get this notification that tells me yeah I have a certificate but obviously this is for this domain and I'm using it internally so that's why it's telling me okay the certificate does not match the IP of the NAS but it's okay we can just proceed and then the application will actually work so now we can continue with the setup of the application so let me do here password password for the sake of the video and then say okay and then to sign into the instance we put the password that we just created and there we go it says let's get started and let's set this up so we can say start fresh and then it'll just give us the application here that is ready for us to use even though we have that certificate warning on the top but at least it works locally to your network exposing it like i said is going to be a pain in the butt but that's something the developer has to fix honestly because that's not the standard way to do this but yeah we got the application working we can now create a budget here we can set up the settings we can um you can create files for your different budgets so for example this one that was created is called my finances but you can create a new one and you can have different files for your finances let's go back into here again we have the budget where it shows us the information based on the data that it stores currently there's nothing the reports should show nothing also but then we can start creating schedules we can start creating piggies rules we can sync our bank and all that stuff and then it'll start working for us I'm not going to go into the details on this, that's stuff that you can read into the documentation, but it is working. The application is working, at least locally, you can get it working. Uh, you need to request an uh, NSSL certificate so that then you can actually use the application. Or in the worst case, since you already have a NAS, you could actually just use the default Synology certificate so you don't have to request anything. Anyway, you're going to get that notification telling you that the certificate doesn't match the IP. So that would be a, an easy way to do that but yeah the application works as you can see it here it just it, it only works locally so i hope you find this uh useful i tried my best to get it to work publicly and all that but it, it was just too much of a pain to try to get it to work uh, so if you did like it hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you have not done so uh, leave me comments in the comment section below things that you would like to see feature because I do a lot of video requests based on things that people request and I prioritize the request from donors this video um, was prioritized because a donor said that he wanted this application to be covered so that is important to know and another thing is that uh, I, you should not have seen an ad on my video that is on purpose I am not monetizing the channel but that also means that spending the effort in creating all these videos gives me zero returns so if you like the content and you want to support me there's going to be a link in the description below where you can donate using, using paypal or there's also a bitcoin address if you prefer to donate that way so you can do it 
in either one of those ways. And I'll really appreciate it. You're going to be shout out on the next video after your donation. So that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.